Hello guys, welcome to Deuce Ultimate for everything that is truly ultimate coming up in this video, the final part of Ingrid Bergman's epic biography. In 1956, she starred in a French adaptation of the stage production Tea and Sympathy. 20th Century Fox had bought the rights to Anastasia with Anatole Litvak slate to direct. Buddy Adler, the executive producer, wanted Bergman, then a still controversial figure in the States, to return to the American screen after a seven-year absence. Litwick also felt she would be an excellent actress for the part and insisted on her starring in the film. Clip from her classic movie, Bell of St. Mary's. And another clip from the movie, Ark of Triumph. Litwick also felt she would be an excellent actress for the part and insisted on her starring in the film. Fox agreed to take a chance, making her a box office hit to play the leading role. Filming was going to be made in England, Paris and Copenhagen. Anastasia, 1956, tells the story of a woman who may be the sole surviving member of the Romanov family. Jor Briner is the scheming general who tries to pass her off as a single surviving daughter of the late Tsar Nicholas II. He hopes to use her to collect a hefty inheritance. Anastasia was an immediate success. Bosley Crowther wrote in the New York Times, it is absolutely beautiful molded performance worthy of an Academy Award and particularly gratifying in the light of Miss Bergman's long absence from the commendable films. With her role in Anastasia, Bergman made a triumphant return to work for Hollywood studio and won the Academy Award for the Best Actress for a second time. Cary Grant accepted the award on her behalf. Its director and Joel Litwick described her as one of the greatest actresses in the world. Ingrid looks better now than she ever did. She's 42, but she looks divine. She is simple, straightforward human being. Through all her troubles, she held to the conviction that she had been true to herself and it made her quite a person. She is happy in her new marriage with her three children by Rossellini, are beautiful, and she adores them. After Anastasia, Bergman starred in Indiscreet 1958, a romantic comedy directed by Stanley Donen. She plays a successful London stage actress, Anna Kellman, who falls in love with Philip Adams, a diplomat played by Cary Grant. The film is based on the play Kind Sir, written by Norman Kresner. She later starred in 1958 picture The Inn of the Sixth Happiness, based on a true story about Gladys Aylward a Christian missionary in China who, despite many obstacles, was able to win the hearts of the natives through patience and sincerity. In the film's climatic scene, she leads a group of orphan children to safety to escape the Japanese invasion. She made her first post-scandal public appearance in Hollywood at the 31st Academy Awards in 1959 as presenter of the award for Best Picture and received a standing ovation when introduced. She presented the award for Best Motion Picture together with Cary Grant, with whom she had recently starred in Indiscreet. Bergen made her television debut in the episode of Star Time, an anthology show, which presented dramas, musical comedies, and variety of shows. In 1961, Bergman's second American television production, 24 Hours in a Woman's Life, was produced by her third husband, Lars Schmidt. Bergman played a bereaved wife in love with a younger man she has known for only 24 hours. She later starred in Goodbye Again as Paula Tessier, a middle-aged interior decorator who falls in love with Anthony Perkins' character, who is 15 years her junior. Paula is in a relationship with Roger Demarest, a womanizer played by Eves Montand. Roger loves Paula, but reluctant to give up his womanizing ways. In 1962, Schmidt is also co-produced his wife's third venture into American television, Hedda Gabler, made for BBC and CBS. She played the titular character opposite Michael Redgrave and Rolf Richardson. Bergen became one of the few actresses ever to receive three Oscars when she won her third and first in the category of Best Supporting Actress for her performance in Murder on the Orient Express. Director Sidney Dumont had offered Bergman the important part of Princess Dragomirov, which felt she could win an Oscar. She insisted on playing the much smaller role of Greta Olsen, this old Swedish missionary. Dumont discussed Bergman's role. She had chosen a very small part and I couldn't persuade her to change her mind. Since her part was so small, I decided to film her one big scene where she talks for almost five minutes straight all in one long take. A lot of actresses would have hesitated over that. She loved the idea and made the most of it. She ran the gamut of emotions. I've never seen anything like it. Bertrand married three times. Her first husband was Peter Aaron Lindstrom, whom she married on 10 July 1937 at the age of 21, who later wanted to become a neurosurgeon and was a dentist. The couple had one child, a daughter, Fidel Thea Lindstrom, born 20 September 1938. After returning to the United States in 1940, she acted on Broadway before continuing to do films in Hollywood. The following year, her husband arrived from Sweden with Thea. Lindstrom stayed in Rochester, New York. 
where he studied medicine and surgery at the University of Rochester. Things didn't work well with Lindstrom as he disliked the silk glamour of Hollywood. Lindstrom later moved to San Francisco, California where he completed his internship at a private hospital and they continued to spend time together when she could travel between filming. Lindstrom did not view Bergman as the rest of the world did. He thought she was too absorbed with her professional popularity and image and was full of vanity. Peter Lindstrom was very fragile with money. Lindstrom had been aware of his wife's affairs when asked by the biographer why he didn't ask for a divorce. He replied bluntly, I live with that because of her income. Bergman returned to Europe after the scandalous publicity surrounding her affair with Italian director Robert Rossellini during the filming of Stromboli in 1950. In the same month from Wally was released, she gave birth to a boy, her son with Rossellini, Roberto Ronaldo, Robin Rossellini, on 2nd February 1950. A week after her son was born, she divorced Lindstrom in accordance with Mexican law and married Rossellini by proxy on 24th May 1950. On 18 June 1952, she gave birth to twin daughters, Esota Ingrid Rossellini and Isabella Rossellini. Isabella became an actress and model and Esota became a professor of Italian literature. It was not until 1957 that Bergman was reunited with Pia in Rome, Lindstrom, however, remained bitter towards Bergman. During the scandal, Bergman received letters in support from Cary Grant, Helen Hayes, Ernest Hemingway, John Steinbeck and other celebrities. Due to this scandal, she was treated by Sweden harshly and the Swedish journalist going as far as claiming that she had destroyed the international reputation of Sweden. This affair soiled her reputation in the United States. The scandal also took xenophobic turns. St. Edwin C. Johnson stated that under the law, no alien guilty of turpitude can set foot on American soil again, and that Bergman had deliberately exiled herself from this country that was so good to her. Her marriage with Rossellini experienced several problems and eventually ended in divorce in 1957. Rossellini's cousin, Renzo Avenzo, was worried that Bergman would deflect Rossellini from making pictures he should be making. Rossellini didn't like her friends for fear of them trying to lure her back to Hollywood. He was possessive and would not allow Bergman to work for anyone else. On December 21, 1958, she married Lars Schmidt, a theatrical entrepreneur from wealthy Swedish shipping family. Bergman had many affairs, one of them was with Spencer Tracy, one with Gary Cooper while filming, and Gregory Peck and photographer Robert Kappa. Bergman died of cancer on 29th August 1982 at midnight on her 67th birthday. Bergman died in London, her ex-husband Lars Schmidt and three other people were present having drunk their last toast to her hours earlier. She recalls instances of in her own life when she had to pry her children's arm from around her neck and then go away to advance her career. Before her death in 1982, she made alterations in her will. The bulk of her estate was divided among her four children. She left some provisions for Rosalini's niece, Fiorella, her maid in Rome, and her agent's daughter, Kate Brown. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more good episodes from this series only on Leo's Ultimate. Do like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.